Now let's learn how laser beam is generated. Okay, the basic idea is stimulated emission. Okay, uh, this left figure shows the uh, uh, electronic energy levels. Okay, E0, E1, E2, and E3. Okay, let's let's assume you know the electrons on this E0 ground state level is pumped. Okay, pumped, you know pumping. Uh, you know there are uh, you know, several ways to pump electrons you know, uh, upon this uh, E3 you know, by uh, light or by okay, electron discharge. Anyway, uh, let's assume now you uh, you know the excited a lot of electrons to this E3 energy level, and then uh, generally the, those electrons are. Uh, are relaxing to low energy level now you let's say you have another uh, uh, the electron energy level e2 and here okay and then these electrons uh, are accumulated um, in e2 energy level and then here another electronic energy level e1 okay <laughs> and what and does by pumping electrons to E3 and then uh, by relaxation uh, electrons are moving uh, to E2 and then um, the, uh, there will be mm, the population inversion okay and then electrons on this E2 energy level have relatively long lifetime and electrons in E2 energy levels um, is much larger than the uh, electron number of electrons the population okay in e1 that is called population inversion okay yeah and then uh, to uh, generate laser beam you need um, to another uh, you know the, the, the light okay mm? the, to sp stimulate uh, this emission okay to uh, the, you know, move down the uh, electrons from E2 to E1. Uh, you need, okay, the photon photons. Okay, you need the light. That's why this is called stimulated emission. Okay, a photon with exact energy between two states E1 and E2 absorb to raise a molecule to uh, excite it, and that photon simulates the excited molecule to emit a photon and return to the lower state okay here the laser beam wavelength is determined by the energy difference between e1 and e2 okay yeah and then once the electrons are uh, what they are excited to are uh, is uh, moved to the lower uh, energy level e1 and then this, these electrons now relax to the original E0 uh, the level and then again it is uh, uh, pumped to E3 and then these uh, you know action uh, continues okay yeah so you know, to induce this laser action okay? you need another light right since E1 and E2 energy level levels are you know already already set yeah? at a very specific uh, you know the uh, hmm? energy so <clears throat> the wavelength of laser okay is very very accurate because e1 and e2 doesn't change okay yeah. when a photon emitted by molecule falling from e2 to e1 strikes another molecule in e2 hmm? and second photon is uh, emitted okay yeah so uh, so uh, to uh, generate laser beam you need you know, these energy states okay so there have been developed a lot of different lasers okay the helium neon laser for example it is very common source of red light because it generates monochromatic light at 632.8 nanometers Okay. and then its power is 0.1 to 25 milliwatt this power is a lot 
Okay, now turn to the monochromatos. Yeah? Light dispersing into its component uh, wavelengths. Okay, that's the, uh, uh, you know, the how to uh, select monochromatic light. You know, ordinary, as I said, ordinary light source, uh, you know, generate continuous uh, light over a certain wavelength range. So you uh, first select a you know, specific wavelength using a monochromator, okay? So selecting a narrow band of wavelengths to pass sample and detect by rotation of grating, okay? Uh, to make a monochromator, the essential part is this one, grating, okay? Grating uh, is very uh, essential part, you know? Uh, you know uh, prism is, is an analog, it's an analog of uh, reflection grating, okay? But uh, in modern instrument, uh, people uh, don't use a prism anymore because prism, the, uh, you know, the wavelengths uh, uh, changes non-linearly, okay? But grating, in grating, the wavelength change, changes linearly, okay? You will see soon, okay? And this part, this whole part is the called the monochromator. And then, let's see, now the light, okay, enters through this entrance slit, okay. It is focused here and then it dispersed there and there. And then with this concave mirror, and then it is, you know, first concave mirror, the light you know, parallelly, you know, send to uh, this reflection grating and in uh, reflection grating diffraction takes place okay diffraction okay some beam now hit here but some beam hit there okay anyway these beams are collected to this another concave mirror and then here reflected beam is focused on this axis slit okay axis slit so by changing okay by changing, uh, by rotating this uh, reflection grating, this whole spectrum, okay, whole spectrum here uh, changes, okay. So instead of moving this axis slit, you know, this one, or uh, gently, um, the uh, people usually rotate this reflection grating, okay, and then the uh, exit light wavelengths depend on this reflection grating rotation, okay. That's how monochromators are working. Uh, this is uh, one type of uh, monochromator. Uh, this is called a uh, Cherny Turner type monochromator. But there are several different types of uh, monochromators. Okay, but principle is the same. They have, you know, mirrors uh, one, or, one or two uh, mirrors, and uh, you know, without the exception, then they have a grating. Okay. Here is here uh, the reflection uh, grating. Okay, and then you have to understand the how this reflection grating works. Yeah, this is very very important. All, all right. Why reflection grating? Because light is reflected at the surface of grating. Okay, and then ordinary grating. You know, if you look at uh, through the microscope, <coughs> you see uh, this a lot of you know small. Uh, what uh, this groups okay this is group usually group shape is uh, this one the so to screw okay but uh, with the holographic uh, method you can make uh, you know this uh, round shape group round shape okay but this group has a uh, uh, direction usually light uh, comes from this side you know and the hit this uh, uh, this a longer edge of groove, uh, not this a short edge, okay? Uh, but with holographic grating, since the, the direction, the, uh, it has no direction, uh, so you can send the beam uh, from here to there uh, or from there. Mm? But that's okay. But anyway, let's take a look, uh, take an example of this, this grating. And light, you know, sent from here, okay, here, but light has uh, some, uh, you know, width, okay? light if you use laser okay laser is very very uh, you know the light size is very small or laser beam only hit this part but usually uh, if you send the light then you have some 
you know, uh, you know, width of light. Yeah? It covers actually from here to uh, there. It covers uh, many, many uh, groups. Yeah? Here it says only two, okay, only two, one, uh, two groups. But actually, the light uh, covers uh, uh, many groups, okay. But uh, let's look at uh, this one. Uh, first, look at the, uh, the, the, this figure, okay? and then in optics we define the angle, you know, with respect to this normal facet normal here. Okay, this is surface, and then here you draw uh, what the, the, the perpendicular line, and then you measure the angle with respect to this perpendicular, uh, uh, you know, the line. Okay, now this is incoming instant uh, angle. And this is, since this is reflected, this angle is a reflected angle. Okay? But now you may ask question. Yeah? I have this question uh, when I was a student. Uh, oh, a teacher or professor, why? Uh, there is a law of reflection, which says that instant angle and reflected angle must be the same. But here it is different. Okay? That makes me very very confused yeah long time ago but if you uh, know the um, um, properties of light <clears throat> one of the properties of light is uh, diffraction diffraction is just as a light beam is diffracted it bent okay especially it covers you know a lot of groups okay so law of reflection also holds in this uh, uh, here, but also diffraction phenomenon, you know, takes place. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, <clears throat> let's look at this uh, uh, blue blue line. Uh, blue is instant light. Okay, and then it's uh, <clears throat> diffracted at some point of grating here, and this one, the here. Okay, and then from the uh, uh, geometry, uh, we can uh, calculate. You see. We can calculate the uh, uh, the difference in light path. Okay, you know the same light uh, comes here and it hit here, but another light you know, hit this one, and then it's uh, diffracted there. Okay, and then this one, hmm? this light, hmm? what? This light travels in you know, a longer distance than this one. Okay, and then if you uh, after you calculate the difference in path, and here T is the you know the distance between groups, okay, and it can be written by this one, okay, it can be uh, written using this one uh, theta, yeah, and this is theta is the angle uh, of uh, what the theta is the angle of this uh, you know this is uh, this line and this uh, you know or oriental line and phi defined as angle okay with uh, between this line and uh, th this beam okay anyway using theta and phi uh, you can calculate the difference okay the path difference and if that path difference is the uh, multiple uh, multiples of wavelengths then the uh, constructive interference takes place, okay? Yeah. And this one, uh, this, uh, this equation is called a uh, grating equation, okay? And then what? And when you rotate the grating, and then these angles are changing, okay? Yeah. And then light is dispersed, okay? Here, if you put, uh, you, you put a uh, white uh, the paper, and then you can see very beautiful spectrum mm, of visible light, like a, uh, like a what the, mm, the rainbow. Okay, here if you put your paper here, you know nothing, only white light. You see, but here after detracted from this grating, this one wavelength is, uh, this uh, what the, mm, the each wavelength can be uh, distinguished. Okay, so you see the you know kind of a rainbow image, all right, yeah. So the, uh, the perseverance difference is A minus B. Hmm? This one is A here and B, okay? The difference 
uh, yeah, is given by this equation, and if this is a multiple of uh, no, variable length, and then it is said that it is constructive uh, interference. Okay, how do you make a grating? A grating uh, originally was made of uh, aluminum because aluminum reflectivity is high uh, in UV and the visible range. Okay, or you can make a grating with uh, plastics. Okay. And then you coat the, the, the surface with aluminum. Okay. Yeah. Here, let's uh, uh, you know, now learn the interference of rays. Okay. Uh, here are two waves. This wave and this wave. They are. Uh, they have same phase. Uh, they are called in phase. Okay, in phase. And constructive interference occurs. I say you simply add these two waves, and then you can have, you know, uh, uh, the more intense beam. Okay, but if uh, the phase is out of phase, okay, let's say mm, the 90 degree out of phase, and then this one is the reference, and this one is a uh, 90 degree is moved and uh, shifted, and then you get you not know, this uh, this wave. But if the phase is completely out of phase. Okay, 180 degree out of phase, and two waves uh, are cancelled out each other, and then you know here nothing, yeah? nothing happens. Okay, yeah, that's the uh, basic uh, you know pattern of interference. Okay, okay let's uh, uh, let's learn uh, more about the, the properties of gratings. Okay, and then grating has you know uh, many properties. And first, the resolution. Yeah? The good grating has high um, resolution. The resolution is the uh, ability to separate too closely a space the peak. Okay. Now your sample have, you know, very closely spaced peaks. Okay. So those peaks must be distinguished, and then you have to have high resolution uh, grating. Okay. So uh, the definition of creating resolution is given by this one. You know, this large R uh, equals lambda over delta lambda. Okay, and delta lambda is uh, it equals n over n. You know, n is what large n is the number of grating per uh, centimeters. Okay, so each centimeter you uh, make uh, groups. Okay, usually. Uh, several thousand groups per centimeter. Okay, Th there are many many groups, uh, right? Yeah, n is an integer. Okay, one, two, or three, right? like that. And then lambda is the uh, average of two closely uh, spaced wavelengths. Okay, and, and like that. And dispersion also you you can uh, define dispersion is ability to separate wavelengths differing by delta lambda. Okay through the difference in angle, all right, difference, dispersion. So some grating has a, uh, you know, high dispersion, which means that, you know, the incoming light is di di dispersed, so, you know, with a wide angle, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you can easily select a specific wavelength, okay? So dispersion of a grating is defined by this equation, okay? Uh, you, yeah, yeah, you don't need to memorize uh, this one. Uh, you just uh, uh, appreciate this equation. Okay, uh, the dispersion of a grating is given by this one, delta phi divided by delta lambda. Phi here uh, is what this one. Okay, this is delta phi. Okay, yeah. If delta phi is large and then a diffracted beam dispersed with large angle, and then you know uh, wavelengths. Uh, you know, specific wavelengths uh, can be selected easily, okay, and divide by delta lambda, okay, this is the uh, dispersion of grating, and equals, it equals n over d cosine phi, okay, yeah, this one, here is an example, wavelength differing by one micrometer, okay, separated by angle of 5.8 uh, degree, okay, which is 0.1 or two radian if n is one yeah, this is uh, you know the most strong uh, diffraction takes place and pi uh, is 10 degree and 
1000 groups per centimeter in this case this portion is is one micrometer okay uh, i think this is enough proof hmm? for ordinary uh, spectroscopy uh, uh, okay decrease in excess slit okay so you uh, in this um, let me see in this uh, we will uh, the, the micrometer you have two slits entrance slit excess slit by changing you know the size of you no know, slit you can uh, control the uh, the resolution okay or, or the bandwidth of uh, radiation okay usually you we people usually uh, control the excess slit side okay decrease in excess slit means decrease in bandwidth of radiation decrease e reaching detector okay if you decrease the excess slit you know small uh, amount of light enters the uh, uh, detector okay so uh, then maybe uh, uh, the noise level will increase okay but but resolution increases okay if you decrease the excess slit you know width okay so resolution is achieved at the expense of decreased signal to noise ratio all right yeah. so if you want to have a very very clean uh, spectrum and then you have to open wide the excess slit but and then you sacrifice the resolution or if you want to have high resolution in the case you ruin the uh, signal to noise ratio the spectrum may be noisy okay yeah. for quantitative analytical uh, measurement bandwidth uh, which is equal or less than one one over fifth of a width of observance band is reasonable okay yeah this is the uh, general guide okay the narrow excess slit the greater resolution the noise signal okay okay here is a efficiency of grating okay the efficiency of grating is defined by this equation okay um, this e sub lambda is the radiance at the uh, specific wavelengths okay uh, this uh, e lambda uh, uh, at grating divided by e lambda at the mirror okay that's the relative efficiency here this n means the order of uh, diffraction the one is the strongest diffraction occurs okay and then two is the second order okay it's which is which is much weaker than the when n is one okay? efficiency is controlled by blaze angle in grating cut okay efficiency is you know, this part uh, you, you you simply accept you know th there is a blaze angle okay blaze angle here uh, is, is this one this is uh, called the blaze angle you know by changing the blaze angle or to change blaze angle uh, what you can do is that uh, you uh, let's see uh, you have the uh, distance between uh, each group okay yeah mm -hmm. anyway uh, the efficiency is controlled by the blaze angle to direct a certain wavelength into the diffraction order of interest the blaze angle is chosen such as alpha equals beta because the condition gives a maximum reflection yeah this one is what this is a condition for uh, what uh, re uh, reflection okay each grating is optimized for a limited wavelengths uh, limited wa uh, range of wavelengths okay so with one grating yeah you cannot you cannot cover the whole spectrum of ir or uv visible okay uh, one uh, one grating covers a certain range hmm? so you if you cover the another range you need another grating yeah so spectrophotometer may require several gratings to scan through its entire spectral range okay? efficiency here is partially controlled by the blaze angle specular reflection uh, is a reflection from a flat surface when the angle of instance is equal to the angle of reflection that's the law of reflection okay the law of reflection hold but as i said the grating has many many groups yeah over the you know very short range and not only reflection but also diffraction takes place on the surface of grating that's why you know the light dispersion is possible 
Each grating is optimized for a limited range of wavelengths. Okay. Yeah, here is the uh, choice of a grating. Okay. Let's see. This figure shows the efficiency as a function of wavelengths. Okay. And let's see. Uh, this one. Uh, this grating covers, you know, the wavelengths of, uh, let, me, let me see, maybe uh, from um, 1200 nanometers to maybe 24 nanometers, okay? But this grating cannot be used for uh, visual uh, range measurement, okay? For visual range measurement, maybe you can use this one, this one, this, uh, this another blue, blue line, okay? And, uh, no, the those gratings, okay. Um, no, those gratings have the same uh, groups per uh, centimeter, okay. Three thousand groups per centimeter, but they have different blade size, okay. Blade size with different, uh, yeah, different blade sizes, you know, makes blade angle different, okay. Yeah. This this one blade size is only three uh, hundred nanometers, and and then they have a different blaze uh, size, okay? And it determines the, the blaze angle, okay? Yeah, we, although the uh, group's number is the same, depending on blaze size, okay? Mm, or depending on the blaze angle, the covered wavelengths uh, uh, are different, okay?